Good evening. We are glad to be here. We are thankful to Music Technology Department at the University and uh, Music Conservatory here for making this program possible. We are also very glad to perform and speak to give a lecture about Drupal, the music which we practice and present. <clears throat> the music Drupal which we sing comes from very old tradition. This is the oldest classical form of Indian music. It's called Drupada. It comes from two words, Dhruva plus Pada. Dhruva means fix, not moving. And Pada means poetry. So, primarily it is a form of vocal music. instrumental. We have very old tradition of instrument in India. Starting from Veena, the goddess of knowledge, Saraswati, holds the instrument Veena in her hand as a it is a sign of her So that way the Drupal, the knowledge of Drupal comes from very long and old tradition. Generally, this music is taught only by oral tradition because we understand in India that the form of natural music cannot be exactly noted. And that's why when we make notation, we lose something. So better to memorize the sound by listening. So the whole concept of music is based on listening. That is called Shruti. Shruti also refers to the microtone, but basically it means whatever is heard. Basically, this music is based on Shruti, on listening, careful listening. Also in Western tradition, like Western tradition, our arts, music, dance, theatre, poetry, where very much associated with our spiritual, so-called religious tradition. The temples in India were cultural centers. 
So the beautiful architecture, dance, music, theater, poetry was associated with the temple also at that time. So the Drupal music has a long tradition of being associated with temples. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm speaking in English and if I am not accessible to you in English, should we translate it? It's okay? Thank you. So, that's why in India the Vedas are considered the oldest source of knowledge. And Vedas were recited in a different manner. Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Arthara Veda and Sama Veda. These were various way of recitation. So in Sam Veda, Sam Veda used to be recited in a particular way. It was more lyrical. So the source of Drupal music comes from Sam Veda recitation. Sam Veda's recitation was based on three notes basically. Udat means up, Anudat means down, and Swari where both meets. So the music, our music took that inspiration took that thought and Drupa developed into a full classical form. Also very important thing to note here that in India from our Bharat Naksha, this is the oldest book written before Christ, 4th century. That book refers two kind of music. One Margi music, one Desi music. Whatever we today we, we have terms in music, classical music, light music, folk music, film music, light classical. And we have made so many categories. Like in Western music, also rock, pop, jazz, blues, classical. But basically, he mentioned two concepts of music. Actually, music is one only. The property of sound is only one. The notes cannot be the same properties being used in all kind of music in the world. You cannot change the note. And the principle of perfect fifth is, is everywhere same. Either in our classical music or Western classical music, anywhere. So, but he explain two kind of music, Margi's music and Desi music. Margi means the music which uplifts you, which uplifts your awareness, which connects you to the Almighty, which connects you to the higher level of consciousness. The other music is called 
Desi music. Desi means it's called, it's, it's a translation is folk. Whatever it comes from, our local uh, sensitivity, local emotions. So, you can say that it is more worldly music. So the classical music, which we have been practicing and which is called today as name given classical, comes from that tradition, Mark is again. Mark, actually Mark means path, way, road, which connects you to between which connects you to the Almighty, to the God. In other terms we can say which, which takes you to, which transports you to the other level of consciousness, higher level of consciousness. So, the Bharat said, he first said the seven notes. He not said, but he, uh, he heard them or explained them. Yeah, he explained their existence of seven notes through experimental Vina. And he said, what you said, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si. Sa, re, ga, ma, pa, dha, ni. And there he explained very particularly that the distance of these notes, seven notes, is not equal. The distance the relation of all seven notes is very, distance is very. So he said, Sa Ma Pa, first, fourth and fifth, have a four Shruti, whether Re and Dha, uh, so second and sixth have three Shruti. Yeah, sh Shruti, overtones and uh, distance. While third and seventh, they have two Shruti. So you will say two, three, four. These are the distances between various notes. So he explained that, I think in your Western music, it was called diatonic before tempered scale. All the old Gregorian chants were written and sung on that principle. So, the Dhrupad singing tradition, the Raga, the tradition of Raga, comes from that thought. So, keeping that in mind, uh, practicing that rule, each note in a melody, any melody, has a particular position and it has a particular distance between that melodic structure. Suppose some melodic structure has five note. And same notes are being sung in other melody. They will not have same pitch. The pitch will differ. Because the basic difference is that whatever pitch we fix, in Ra, 
is corresponding to tonic. Tonic is everything for us. We, we are always bounded, we are always grounded, we are always uh, highly obsessed and connected with tonic. So any note, any raga, we sing, that each note of that melody has to be, has to have harmonization with tonic. And that's why it's wonderful to know that we don't have concept of dissonance. Because any All 12 notes, according to chromatic uh, tempered scale, we can use any keys with any key, and every key will respond musically because they are all adjusted to the tonic, and that's why they differ the position. For example,
scripture is established in proper style and this is the as we told this is the oldest classical form where the masters they were saintly people who discovered they they heard the right pitch and that is also based on science of natural harmonics that is not very much subjective and i repeat it that not only those masters if one tries even today with that concentration everybody can hear it it's omnipresence so they heard those microtones and said the melodic structure in dhrupad music we practice those principles of raga and as i said that it has they said that drupad is old and related with samveda temples it has a lot of meditational value a spiritual value i would rather say it that it allows you to look into yourself that is the effect of that music to stable your state of mind that is the 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 feeling of contemplation the feeling of peace that is the aim of this music as i said that it traces its origin to the samveda it doesn't mean of course it is entertaining when you are in deep meditation it's also an, as a, it's it's entertainment so but it is not just entertainment you in the not in the general sense we understand but in sense of meditation and contemplation in the listener and performer both and as i said that it brings an awareness heightened awareness it brings you to that stage this this music and the to bring that effect or to bring those principle of sound which we were discussing the irregular interval of the notes in the melody to manifest that to practically explain them you need a particular voice culture 
And that wise culture comes from the making of your body. That wise culture comes from the very being in your body. When you you are dealing with your body naturally, then that wise culture appears and those musical nuances are being created. And we say that the body and mind aligns with that music. Whatever music today we have in India available in form of Hayal, Thubri, Tappa, Cheti, Kajri, even our Bollywood music or uh, other light musical forms, the source of their music comes from Drupa. Conceptually, musically, and the melodic structure wise. Any melodic structure you listen that comes from some raga structure. It is not possible to think of any melodic structure or which is available in our music today. It's not part of our music. So now we will discuss about the components of Dhrupa. So as I was already saying, voice culture. In Dhrupa, we believe, we understand that the sound journey starts from navel, chest, throat, nasal to cerebral. And that should happen very naturally. And that is also a natural <coughs> journey of sound. Because the sound, the air, starts from here, moves to here, comes to here, the nasal and cerebral. How to bring those sounds in alignment? So our masters, they were not only, fortunately will be, it will be interesting to know that the Sangeet Ratnakar uh, writer, Sharandir, who is very highly accomplished uh, musicologist of that time, he was musician, musicologist, and at the same time he wrote Sangeet Ratnakar and described about the human body. So he was also an Ayurvedic doctor. So Ayurveda, the body and the music are very deeply connected <coughs> in Indian music. So, our masters in every gharana, whatever we have in Orient tradition today, in singing all gharana, all the masters, all great 
physicians have been always describing the great importance of sa the first tonic sa you will wonder to know what is sa sa is with vowel a and that is a very important practice in music whenever anybody starts learning any kind of classical music any gharana the teacher asks him first to practice sa which is a a ka so the secret of voice culture lies into aakar a which comes from the kant we call in india kant sangeet vocal music vocal cords so finally according to the sound the science of sound that sound contains holds all other sound means that sa has a capacity of having all the sound we hear because any sound which we hear we translate into in seven notes 
seven notes and their variations, five variations, A according to present understanding. In our old system, we have many other names. There were not twelve notes. There were more than twelve notes. So, to practice that sound, it's important to practice A. Ah. Practicing this sa, align your all five parts from navel, chest, throat, nasal, cervical, and you listen sounds from all five parts of the body. When your vocal cords are trained in that way, then you can change the pressures. Of course, when you are going lower octave, the more pressure coming or sound is coming from bass, from navel or chest. And as soon as you transfer to the upper octave, the nasal proportion increases. So, these are main points I try to explain about voice, raga and trooper music. Now I will request you people to arise any question if you have, if you want to know anything else or you have doubts about this. Other meaning of these notes. Yeah, like Sharad you have explained. Yeah. It's appealing to very well. So that you have Sharad and Arm of them also. What does it mean? Literally. A literal meaning is like Rishab is called uh, Actually, sorry, I don't know the actual meaning of it. Rishabh and it's said that Rishabh is little lifted sound. And Gandha comes from the Kandha, which is uh, situated in Afghanistan. Kandha. It's just written in the books. And also it's very simple to Google. I think you will find it. <laughs> ah, and Madhyam. Madhyam means which comes in the middle. Madhyam means middle. So Sa, Re, Ga. Madhyam is middle and Pa, Dhani. So the nature of Sa, Re, Ga and Pa, Dhani are very identical. And Ma is coming in the middle. Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Dhani. So, uh, this is the octave distribution. Anything else? Udat means up. lifted up. Anudat means down. And Swari means uh, uh, middle. It's a, these are not name of the um, Swara. These are Position. concept. Position. Concept. Like you see, like somebody is talking 
Hello, how are you doing? So that is Swarit in that and Hello, how are you doing? There is up and down. So there is Udat, Anudat within that range. And if I say, Hello, how are you doing? There is also Udat, Anudat, but that Swarit is changed. Hello, how are you doing? There is Udat and Anudat in that speech, but Swarit is changed. Hello, how are you doing? That is so Swarit is changing and Udat Anuta is moving around that. You will see that, that there are three kind of notes, Udat, Anuta and Swarit. Same concept if you go back to the Bharat, he explained three kind of Shutyanta. Udat, Anudat and Swarit. Four, three, two. Three is Udat, two is Anudat, and four is Swarit. Swarit is Sa, Ma and Pa. Yeah. I'm interested in how you experience uh, the production of some of the more distant Shruti. Um, like for example, when you sing Dot, uh, you can really hear inside of your head the coincidence between the fifth and the fourth harmonic. Or when you sing Pi, you can hear the third and the second. But how do you experience some of the more uh, distant shruti that have the more complex ratios? In the same way, are you hearing higher combinations of overtones or are you hearing some yeah, other? Yeah, you are right. Uh, I think uh, the, 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 be, the when, when you are presenting it in the best way, you hear it before it. Because the relation, the melodic structure you have in mind, and that you listen differently. Komal Ray, Flat Ray, when I am singing Bhairvi, when I am in Bhairvi. That's why I told you, you have to have meditational uh, state when I actually want to do that. Yeah, but of course, when when we produce the sound, any sound, we first we listen with the tanpura, we correlate, yeah, that, and then we yeah, so This tonic and rag it leads you to listen that way. If I am singing Sri, the same flat rate will be changed. Or if I am singing 
Marwa. The flat rate, the color of flat rate, actually its frequency will be also changed. So. Sorry. 
Yeah, you cannot pay it like that. It's, it's just, you have to strike. Simple. This is the way to. And it's also a different uh, philosophy. <coughs> because our masters in Indian music, old masters, they always presented theories, practicals, on striking up the string, like Set up the theory. Number one. And the second is uh, Drupal is a style of singing. So if you you follow the style on any instrument, which is called Drupal style. Yeah. It can be Drupal can be extended to any instrument. Even violin. Violin and uh, Sarangi. Uh, we have two students. And they are playing very good. They they live in Italy. They are Italian, and they play with us in duet. One is playing saxophone, and the other is silver flute. And I deliberately ask them not to change the nature of the instrument. Change the music, not the nature. Keep the instrument as it is completely. Because when it sounds, one should understand it is a saxophone. But you have to adopt the music. So this music, Drupal music, can be adopted on any instrument. Second thing you ask that, what is the relation of the, I have not very clear idea, but there are some relations that Rishabh is from here and the Nari. But, but when you will sing, you will find you it. You will find it. <laughs> yeah, now we just come to this instrument, percussion instrument. It's called Pakhavaj. The old name of its Mridang. Mrida, Mrida means soil. Clay. Clay. And Ang means body. The, bo the body of the body the, which is made of clay. The body which is made of clay. And it's a very old instrument like uh, Drupal music. It's a, it's a source of all other percussion instruments in India. Theory-wise, concept-wise, the language-wise, everything 
uh, whatever tabla are other instruments follow, they, the, all the basic uh, language comes from the Pakhavaj. It is two headed drum, one side we put uh, the uh, iron paste and on the this, to tune the instrument. To tune the instrument to, to, to the tonic. So, like uh, we have seven notes, Pakhavaj is also its own language. Akhilesh will explain about its language and how the various uh, combination of the sound are created, how the various patterns of time created, which we call life, how the tala is created, he will explain. always tuned to the tonic. Basically, eight syllables. 
for the producing the alpha the sound so it's tat dev son na ki ta
There are various compositions in the play. Sparan, Theka, Rela, Tukra. So the Rela is a continuous rolling sound. You play one phrase continuously. So I am playing Takita Takai Kita. Katita Takai Kita. Takita Takai Kita. Takita Takai Kita. Then 
Karnataka music basically do not allow any accompaniment except veena. This violin accompaniment came recently. So we also sing yeah, with the Tony. Also, singing procedure, pet, uh, components, development of, the development of the melody, we do ala, jor means middle part of ala, and jhala means fast tempo uh, singing. That is also same way in Karnataka music developed as Raga Tana. We sing Drupal composition, they sing Pallavi. So Ragam, Tanam, Pallavi, and we sing the same thing in Ala and Drupal. Now also the Gamakas are quite same. The only major difference not major, but difference came because of the change of the language. Now, another similarity is uh, when the... Yeah, holding time. Holding tala. Yeah, holding tala in the hand. We Drupal musicians have the tradition that when we are singing, we have to hold the time in hand. Physically, we have to show the time. Time cycle. So, so, so the... Every South Indian musician keeps tala. These are very basic similarities. Because the language of South Indian music is Telugu, Tamil, Dravidian language, they have fast speed, faster speed than Hindi or Sanskrit. And their sound is the nature of language is more up and down, Angola. So there is more Andola in South Indian music and less Andola in North Indian music. Also, there were five Geetis were described in Sangeet Ratnakar. One of the Geeti was Vega Swara. Vega Swara. Swara means note. Vega means speedy, speedy fast. So where the Swaras are moving fast, so from that particular Geeti style of singing, this South Indian style derived. Next. Yeah, please. What's yeah. the main difference between Pakawaj and Vrindanam? As Akhilesh told, it's most more, less or more so same. The basic difference the structure is same, mostly. In the left side, they can they they, they play with fingers. They move it. We don't do it. We have only two sounds: close and open. But they put very little bit this uh, flower, flower, so they can move it like tabla. <coughs> Here. Here, they don't have the resonance of this long. They deliberately cut it. Two, because the speed of the language is very fast, so that... And they play by fingers. <laughs> Sustention of we sound can, is important. For 15 seconds. Okay. And the lyrics are same. The bottom layer is same. Yes, please. How many of the sounds of the Kalabach are pitched and out of the pitch sound? Are they the key, the tonic, the fifth, 
it can be an anionic a power sound can be an anionic it is due to the most of the time tonic so and like if you are using c as a tonic give it tune to c c sharp d d sharp whatever and if you don't we don't have any standard to measure we can set anywhere wherever sa it can i can make it sa and then whatever build up suits, the whatever tonic suits to you you yeah. do it but except for the tonic cardi hour half or tones from the scale that you can play i am not clear about your question is it only the tonic as a pitch sound for for singing or what pakhavaj yeah so most of the time it is only playing on tonic always tonic then it gives effect yeah what kind of instrument is a veena that you mentioned before veena rudra veena rudra veena and it's uh, no this long uh, bamboo yeah i can if somebody can google it and then just <laughs> so do you play sometimes for oh, one minute one minute i think i have i have This is my teacher Ustad Zia Muhyiddin Dagar he is holding this rudra veena you are not seeing this to the whole pumpkins yeah the pumpkins but is a big tan and the um, pardas on the the frets this is a veena rudra veena yeah we can sing all in fact we learned from him uh, while he was playing and we were he was teaching us so yeah we play he gave yeah. us uh, uh, he gave uh, lessons to us only through him yeah sometimes so twice but yeah some information about naga you can see it ala is very important feature to evo the evo explain the melody through ala and interestingly it is uncomposed exactly what we are going to sing we ourselves do not know we compose it spontaneously and the rhythm of ala is also varying sometimes so we present a small piece of ala in rag shivran ji rag chalu kaise Thank you. 
not in pulse, unmetered, and comes to the pulse, middle tempo, and end in the fast speed. With the deep oscillations, we call it gamma. <laughs> These kind of sounds, deep sounds. Then we come to the composition. Then we come to the composition. Now we present a small composition in Ra, Saint Bhairavi. Its uh, poetry is written by Saint Kabir, very famous Indian poet. Ham sabamani, sakal ham mani, ham pe aur dusra nahi. It means I am in all and all everybody is in me so there is no concept of other
ਕਰਾਂਗੇ 